Welcome to episode 5 in this series on Title Studio from Boris FX. In episode 3, I briefly covered the creation of a text object. In this episode, I want to take it further and include the subject of extruded text. Extruded text, unlike flat text, can have a surface material applied. This opens up all sorts of possibilities that can make text very aesthetically pleasing. I'll be demonstrating how to use an image file to create your own custom material. I also want to explore bevels, which can enhance characters. I'll explain and demonstrate how to design your own bevels and extrusion contours. Finally, I'll deal briefly with on-screen guides, which can help with the positioning of text strings. Please note that I'm using Title Studio within Continuum version 2021.5. Your version's UI may be slightly different. As usual, I'll start with a blank sheet. The easiest way to generate extruded text is to click the Add New Media icon and select Extruded Text. This will place a default text string onto the composite display. You can get a sense of the extrusion just by looking at the text, but to get a better idea, I'll select the Controls window and use the Tumble X control to tip the text. I'll also use a spin Y control to spin the text slightly. To explore the extrusion possibilities, select the Extrusion tab. The options under this tab are not numerous, so I'll go through them from the top. The extrusion parameter determines the level of extrusion, 1.5 being the default. The higher the number, the larger the extrusion. The bevel type parameter can be one of four types and is accessed via a drop down list. The default type is straight. The first three options are fairly straightforward. The fourth, Custom, allows the bevel to be customised. I'll deal with this a little later. Bevel amount has a default value of 0.2 and its use is fairly obvious. Bevel depth determines how much the bevel extends beyond the extrusion. It has a default value of zero. Increasing this causes the extrusion to increase to accommodate the increase in bevel depth. Edge contract contracts or expands the extrusion edge. Polygon count. This value will affect the smoothness of the text. A higher value will result in smoother text, but could result in a slower preview. The back bevel checkbox, when checked, will cause the reverse of the text to be beveled.
The extrusion contour drop down has two options, straight and custom. Straight is obvious, the extrusion will be straight from front to back. The custom option, like the custom bevel type option, allows the extrusion contour to be customised. I'll deal with this option along with the custom bevel option later. Material can only be applied to extrusions. I'll deal with extruded text first, then spline objects and spline primitives. With some extruded text generated, I'll open up the Material Styles window by going to the Command Bar window option and then I'll select Material Styles. Don't forget that the window will be tabbed with and open in the window that currently has focus. That's the one that has a yellow border. Before I proceed, I'll go through the options in this UI. At the top there are seven icons, which I'll describe now. The first icon allows a new category to be added. As you can see, I've added a category to store my custom material styles in. The second icon allows a category to be renamed. Use this function wisely. There's no protection against renaming default categories. I would suggest only using this for renaming your own custom categories. The next icon allows deletion of categories. When you select this, a warning appears asking for confirmation. Again, I would suggest you only use this function on your own categories. Be warned though, when you delete a custom category, there is no warning. The fourth icon allows you to save the current style as a custom style. When you select this option, a dialog box appears prompting you to give your style a name. The style will be saved to the currently selected category. When I'm saving my custom style, I always select my custom category before saving. The next icon allows the selected style to be renamed. Selected style thumbnail will have a red border. As with the category rename function, selecting this will prompt you to rename the selected style. Again, I would suggest only renaming your own custom styles. The sixth icon allows the currently selected style to be deleted. Guess what I'm going to say? Yes, confine your deletions to your own styles. Deletion is undoable, so use with care. Multiple styles can be deleted using the normal Windows selection methods. The seventh icon simply changes the background to the thumbnails. Below these icons is a drop-down list containing all available categories. Underneath that is a slider. This simply changes the size of the thumbnails. That's the Material Styles window UI dealt with. Before proceeding, I need to ensure that material tracks are being displayed by clicking on the Show Hide Material Tracks button. Now to apply a style to the text. This is achieved very easily. All you do is select either the Shape Track entry 
the material track entry, or, if material has already been applied, the texture track entry. Then double click on the required style. You'll notice that if you're applying material to a blank style, the material track will change from colour to texture. You'll also see that the track contains the file path for the image being used as a material. Having applied the material style to your text, you may find that it doesn't quite fit on the text string correctly. This is a style I saved using an image of a flag. I'll use this as an example. With the texture track entry selected, I'll select the texture modifier tab under the controls tab and use the location, scale and rotate parameters to move the texture into a more suitable place on the text string. There are many more things you can do with the texture, but I won't be covering these in this tutorial. Feel free to have a play around with the various other parameters. I'll deal with applying material styles to spline media now, but the method is very similar to that for text. First, to start with a clean sheet. Now to generate a spline object using the Add New Media option. The spline object needs drawing now using one of the spline creation tools. I'll use the rectangle tool. With the rectangle drawn you can see that it's not extruded. The same rules apply to spline media as with text media. The media has to be extruded. To apply extrusion to the rectangle, go to the Change Track Shape icon on the Shape Track Entry. Click on it and select Extrusion. Now a material style can be applied. Use the same procedure to apply material style to a spline primitive. The only difference is that you don't need to draw a spline primitive. Now let's create a custom material style. In preparation, locate a suitable image file to use. Best results will be had if the image has the same resolution as your project. I'll start with a blank canvas again. I've found the easiest way to create a custom material style is to apply a style to the font as I described earlier.
This will generate a texture track entry. At the side of the padlock on this entry, there's an icon. This is the Change Track Media icon for a texture track entry. If you click this icon, a list appears which will show a check mark at the side of the image file option. Click on this option and you'll be prompted to browse for an image file. Locate your chosen image file and select Open. This will replace the material style for your text with the image you've just selected. All you need to do now is save your custom style as I described earlier. May I suggest that you create some appropriately named categories that you can store your custom styles in. If you prefix your category name with a double digit, such as 01, the category will appear at the top of the category list. Similarly, it's a good idea to prefix your styles with a digit or digits so that they are ordered properly. Title Studio comes with several inbuilt extrusion styles. If the extrusion style UI isn't showing or its tab isn't available, you need to go to Window and select Extrusion Styles. Remember that the window will open up and be tabbed with the currently selected window and that there may be a slight delay before it appears. Let's go through the elements of this UI. At the top there are seven icons. These perform the same function as the seven icons in the Material Styles UI. As in the Material Style UI, there's also a drop-down list containing available categories and a slider that changes the size of the thumbnails. My advice on renaming or deleting categories or styles still holds. Underneath the slider, there's a list of Extrusion Attributes checkboxes. I'll deal with these checkboxes shortly. To the right of the checkboxes is the thumbnail display showing all available extrusion styles for the selected category. Regarding categories, in the default list of categories, you'll see one named Custom Contours. Each style in this category has a predefined extrusion contour. You can use styles in this category to quickly apply a contour or to create your own custom contour. Now back to the checkboxes. They allow specific extrusion attributes to be omitted when the style is applied. By default, all but one is checked. For instance, if I find a style I like, the gold bar style for example, but I don't want gold as the material, I can take the check mark out of the materials checkbox, then double click the gold bar style thumbnail. Oh, by the way, it's best to select the shape track entry before applying.
You can see that the extrusion has been applied, but the gold material has not. Here's another example. I'll apply the chrome tail style. You can see that it has a fancy side style. I may decide that I want the style, but I don't want the fancy side style. I can achieve that by taking the check mark out of the side style checkbox, then reapplying the style. You can now see that the style has been applied, but the extrusion contour hasn't. Title Studio allows customization of extrusions. Different parts of the extrusion can have a custom color or texture applied. The shape of the bevel and the side profile can also be customized. I'll deal with the latter two first, customizing the bevel and side profile. Having created the extruded text, I've removed all the letters except the I. I'll zoom in a little and tilt the letter so that the extrusion and bevel can be seen a little better. Now I'll select the Extrusion tab, which will display the extrusion parameters. I'll now increase the bevel amount to 1. This will show the custom bevel clearly. Now to create a custom bevel. I need to select the Bevel Type parameter drop-down and select Custom. You'll see that a new track has been added in the timeline called Custom Bevel. Looking at the letter you can also see that a default custom bevel has been applied. The custom bevel entry now needs selecting. As you can see, after selecting, the familiar spline tools appear in the tools window. I'll select the pen tool and proceed to draw a spline object in an empty space. Now, for some basic rules for designing bevels. When you draw the spline for the bevel, it's important to note that the dominant cusp is the one infilled with white. This is the first cusp to appear when you click on the composite display with the pen tool. It's important because the position of the cusps in the spline in relation to the initial cusp will determine whether the bevel is concave or convex. Let me demonstrate this. As you can see, the bevel is straight and external. Now I'll grab the right hand cusp and move it downwards. The bevel is now straight and internal. If you imagine that the white cusp is the center of an imaginary circle, and the hollow cusp is a point on the circumference of that circle, some basic rules apply. With the hollow cusp anywhere between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, the bevel will be straight and external. With the hollow cusp anywhere between 90 degrees, 
and 180 degrees, the bevel will be straight and internal. With a hollow cusp anywhere between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, the bevel will be abnormal. I say abnormal, but it's an interesting effect to apply nonetheless. OK, so that's with a straight spline. Let's see what happens when I introduce some more cusps into the spline. If I move the central cusp upwards, I get a combined internal and external straight bevel. If I move it downwards, I get the same combination but in reverse. The internal bevel is on the outside and the external one is on the inside. By the way, you may notice that one or more splines don't look exactly straight. I think this is an illusion caused by the zoom factor. I'll now introduce a curve into the spline by converting the cusp into a smooth point. You can see that by manipulating the smooth point various bevel effects can be produced. Many more bevel effects can be created if you introduce more smooth points onto the spline. I'll not do that now but feel free to experiment. Now for the extrusion contour. This is the profile of the extrusion from front to back. I've changed the bevel back to straight to avoid any confusion. Now I'll change the extrusion contour by selecting Custom in the Extrusion Contour drop-down. Notice the addition of a custom side profile entry in the timelines control. As with custom bevels, I'll select this entry and draw the spline. Now, as you can see, moving this spline has no effect on the side profile. It stays flat. To change the contour of the side profile, I must change the profile of the spline object. Notice how lifting the cusp creates a convex side profile and moving it down creates a concave side profile.
If I change the smooth point back into a cusp and pull the cusp upwards, the side profile turns into a sharp inverse V shape. If I pull the cusp downwards, the side profile is a sharp valley. Now the letter has no bevel on its rear, so let's fix that. I'll select the shape track, then go to extrusion and place a check mark in the back bevels option. The extrusion can be customised in other ways too. To better show this, I'll delete this text object and create another one with a different extrusion style. I'll go to Extrusion Styles and double click the Custom Contour Style. This style contains all the timeline entries that allow complete customization of the extrusion. For example, if I wanted a specific colour for the extrusion front, I would first select the relevant entry and open it up. This reveals the colour entry which I'll select. I can then select the Controls tab which will then show the Material Attributes option. I'll not deal with all these parameters now, only the colour option labelled Diffuse. Selecting the colour swatch opens up the colour selection dialog. From here I can choose a different colour for the extrusion front. I'm not going to go through all the timeline entries, but they behave much the same as the one I've just demonstrated, so feel free to try them out yourself. Before I finish, I want to deal briefly with on-screen guides. These consist of one or more vertical and or horizontal lines which you can position to make text object placement more accurate. The on-screen guides are enabled when the composite window rulers are displayed. If the rulers aren't displayed, you will need to go to the on-screen controls icon and select rulers and guides. You can also select the command strip option preview, then select show rulers and guides. Guides are brought onto the display by selecting the hand tool, placing the mouse cursor on either ruler, holding the mouse button down and pulling onto the display. Like so many operations in Title Studio, this can be a bit fiddly. I found that best results are obtained by pulling the guides slowly.
The guideline colour can be changed in the Grids and Guidelines palette, which are covered in Episode 4 Part 2. I now have to make sure that Snap to Guides is enabled. Now, if I select the Shape Object track, then the Translate Interactor tool, I can use the arrows to move the text object into position. You'll notice that the text doesn't snap right up to the guidelines, so you must take that into account when placing the guides. You will also see that the interactor arrows snap to the guides as well. Before I finish, I need to point out something important. If you scale the text object, snapping won't be accurate. Let me demonstrate. The current text object has a point size of 52. If I scale this up to say 200, then try to snap the text to the guides, it won't work correctly. The snap position doesn't change because the original text box hasn't changed. It's simply been scaled up in the display. For this reason, if you want to snap text objects, it's best to change the point size rather than the scaling parameter if you want to change the size of the text. Well, that's me done for this episode. I'm not exactly sure what the subject of the next episode will be. Maybe I'll make a start on keyframe animation, or maybe I'll continue with the subject of extrusion and deal with extruded shapes. We'll see. As always, thanks for sticking with me to the end. If you found this tutorial useful, please consider subscribing. Until the next time, bye for now.